In today's series, we're going to be going over the all-terrain rugged style of the new 2023 Mazda CX-50 2.5 Turbo Meridian Edition all-wheel drive in polymetal gray metallic over terracotta and what the package is going to entail from the exterior in the interior with a comparison of Toyota, Hyundai, and Subaru. I'm Anthony from Hawkeye Rides. I'm going to go over all the specs and details starting now. The Mazda CX-50 Meridian Edition starts off with the front fascia. You're going to get a mask that covers the headlamp assembly, LED headlamps and daytime runnings. The same grill pattern with the honeycomb and the gloss black that's gonna wrap underneath it. And on the lower bit, the non-functional vent is still there with your indicator lights and the satin aluminum on the lower trim. Clearance at 8.6 inches. Subaru is at 8.7 inches. So it's almost as good as a Subaru Outback or a Forester in I like to compare it against the wilderness because this is an off-road variant. Unfortunately, it does not increase any of the clearance. You get the CX-50 Meridian Edition badging with the hood decals. It makes it look a lot more sporty and rugged, flaring out the fenders, all-terrain tires, 18-inch, six double-spoke alloy wheels, gloss black, strut front suspension, trailing arm in the rear, 12.8 inches is the disc reading on all four corners. This package reminds me of the Subaru Crosstrack, except this is going to be longer at 185 5.8 inches, a wheelbase at 110.8 inches. It's a touch longer than the CX-5. You cannot option this package on the CX-5. If you want that rugged look with the side skirts that flare out the satin aluminum that bulge out even more, this is the trim you have to go to. You can still get the platform on the CX-5. Standard all-wheel drive towing up to 3,500 pounds, which is going to be the same as Subaru and Toyota. LED tail lamps and on the lower bit, non-functional vents on the side. More of that off-road style for the lower bumper in the satin aluminum to polish it off. Power lift gate to go inside to 31.4 cubic feet. It opens up on the sides here with a 12 volt charger. And underneath, you have your spare tire. You can split fold the rear bench in the back at a 60-40 split, increase in cargo to 56.3 cubic feet with LED interior lights turbocharged inline four cylinder. Let's go inside, start it up so you can hear that exhaust note. Inline four cylinder turbocharge is what you're getting for that exhaust note. I know it kind of has a little bit of a drone note to it, but it does have some high pitch notes and it does have that aggressive style on the exterior. And they back the performance with a Sky Active G 2.5 liter twin scroll turbocharged inline four cylinder, producing 256 horsepower and 320 pound feet of torque. That's paired to a six speed automatic transmission, achieving 23 to 29 mpgs that's good for a zero to 60 around 6.2 seconds with a quarter mile at 14.8 seconds top speed over 120 miles per hour and all of these numbers don't indicate anything to the meridian edition they don't actually give you anything for your suspension or your performance but the turbo does increase the speed making it faster than zero to 60 in the quarter mile in which this will be faster than all of its competition. Let me know in the comments what you think about the 2023 Mazda CX-50 Meridian Edition as we go inside, go over the tech, and take this for our drive. Entering inside the Mazda CX-50 Meridian Edition, you're at 39.1 inches of headroom, 41.7 inches of legroom. Because this is the Meridian Edition, we're going to get terracotta interior, 10-way power seat adjustment for the driver, six-way power adjustment, for the passenger 
heated seats. The dash gets the leatherette with the terracotta contrast stitching, and it's a two-tier with the air vents that start here and on the side for the passenger, and the driver gets more of a sporty effect with some button functionalities that go for your memory seats and to open the tailgate. Going into your 10.25 color, display it is non-touch we do have navigation it's just not set up with apple carplay android auto sirius xm am fm streaming bluetooth audio put it into reverse we have a reverse camera with the lines that do not move and it does not cover the whole screen going into your dual climate control settings you have a storage pocket right here for a cell phone cup holders can fit probably a 32 ounce without any issues at all leather for the gear lever the gloss black that's going to surround it in the satin aluminum your rotary knob for your infotainment screen and to turn on and off your stereo system with your mi drive which will change from sport normal and off-road. One thing they cleaned up from the CX-5 is where you rest your arms. They've moved this up, you can open it up, and it's deep storage pocket, but it's still kind of pushed backwards a little bit. And you have another storage area right here that you could put a cell phone with a leather wrap, three-spoke steering wheel, multi-function as always, with the paddle shifters, the gauge cluster, as an array of information in the center for the driver. The door panel integrates into the dashboard. That's the way Mazda does all of their design with the soft materials right here. Everyday materials here, soft for your elbows, one touch up and down for all the windows, and a storage pocket that's long, just a little bit narrow. For the back seats, I'm at 38.6 inches of headroom, 39.6 inches of legroom, six foot three, I can fit without too many issues. It's gonna be a little bit less head and legroom in this vehicle compared to the CX-5. Two USB ports and your air vents in the center. You'll have storage only behind the passenger seat. The door panel gets your everyday materials with the contrast look and it's soft for your elbows, one touch up and down, and a storage pocket that increases so you can put a flask. Sitting into the center, headroom is still not necessarily an issue. Leg space, feet, butt, and shoulder space is. Because it's not the widest vehicle, it will be hard to entertain three adults my dimensions. 256 horsepower out of this inline four-cylinder twin scroll turbocharged engine, which is quite a bit of performance numbers. 320 pound-feet of torque, 0 to 60, pretty much right at six seconds. I mean, it's a few tenths off. It is insane, especially when you're at a $42,000, $43,000 price point. And a lot of the price point increase is because of this Meridian Edition package in which we also have the platform. Unfortunately, the package does not do anything to your suspension, your ride clearance. It just gives you all-terrain tires, which will make the ride a little bit more noisy inside, but it's not really going to make it for an off-road vehicle. Towing does not increase. Nothing increases for your roof rails, in which if you go to Subaru and you get the wilderness package, you can put 700 pounds on top. You also increase towing to 3,500 pounds. So I like that package because it does things and it also increases your clearance. But here, it's all aesthetics. The aesthetics on the exterior, it is something I like and that is a pro because it makes this look a lot more off-road orient and aggressive. Very similar to a Honda HPD package which gives you the same type of aesthetics on the exterior. With these ultra tires it does change the ride a little bit because you're going to feel a lot more of the road itself especially when you're going over speed bumps or you're doing your daily chores so it is something to take in consideration because if you want the platform you can do that anyways you don't have to option this package and you can do that also on the CX-5 which will have more interior space and more cargo capacity than this model the difference though here is the width feels a little bit wider the interior just feels more open than the CX-5. A little bit more of an adventure in the interior, whereas that one's going to be more of a luxury set. Comparing this to an Infiniti QX50 or a Acura RDX, this is going to be faster even with that VC turbocharged engine or the VTEC engine against it. If you don't option this package and you just get the turbo, you're going to be in the mid $35,000 range, which is pretty darn good considering you still have power seat adjustments and the upholstery in the interior for everything being soft. Turbo, here we go. Unfortunately, because there's a lot of traffic, can't get it up too crazy. But you can see this thing is ready to take off. 
it's going to take me to some pros and cons and we're going to go over that right now starting off with what i like like i was saying the exterior i think they did an excellent job just on the disadvantage or what i dislike is it doesn't do anything to ground clearance suspension increasing towing increasing performance increasing weight on top for your roof rails doesn't do anything just aesthetics but the aesthetics that you're getting is a decent bargain considering you are getting upgraded wheels and you're putting all of the flared out fenders all around the vehicle so i guess if you really put it into perspective it would probably work out cheaper to do the package than to do it aftermarket the second thing that i like is they have dressed what i dislike so much on the cx5 your armrests or where you rest your elbows here you have a lot of room because they've actually made this where you can use it whereas the cx5 they take it so much longer back that it becomes just an elbow rest checking the brakes so you can see how that is you can stop on a dime not an issue with that the last thing that i like is the interior space also feels more wide inside and more open whereas on the cx5 it's not claustrophobic it's just the way they designed this center piece it actually makes it feel a little bit more cramped in the front turn radius at a stop point is going to get about two to part lane let's rock and roll Now that was full throttle in the sense of we were going under two RPM. So it takes a little bit to get engaged. The ride noise does increase. And a lot of that is because of the all-terrain wheels. You've already heard the first thing I dislike. The second thing that I dislike is the platform takes away from the Pano moonroof. When you put this up, there's really no point to have a Pano. Taking me to the last thing, no digital gauge cluster. They did such a great job fixing the interior up from the CX-5, but then they left the same gauge cluster. It would have been nice to see that change and maybe change the infotainment screen as well. The visibility in this opposed to the CX-5 is gonna be a little bit more sleek. It feels like the hood is a little bit longer and you feel like you're sitting a little bit lower. So it does have a little bit of a difference in the actual ride. Going back to Subaru and Toyota, this one is going to have more soft amenities than Toyota. Subaru does a pretty good job giving you soft materials. 0.1 inches more of clearance is not a big deal. So if you're thinking about Subaru, unless you get the wilderness package in which it can escalate to a higher price tag than this, I think this is a great alternative if you're really comparing this against the CX-5. I like to thank Tyrone Square Mazda for giving us this 2023 Mazda CX-50 Meridian Edition for our car review. If you're already a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Hawkeye community. If not, I don't know what you're waiting for. Click the next video and the subscribe button. Check out the merchandise, Instagram, and website, and everything we do here at Hawkeye Rides.